In this tutorial, I will go over six different reasons why your material displacements may not be working in Blender. So this is a super common question that I get in the comments of my videos, so I thought I'd make a video on it. Now if you'd like to learn how to properly set up displacements in Blender, then I have two tutorials you might be interested in checking out. So I have a tutorial on how to use the displacement modifier, and then I have another tutorial on how to use the material displacements. Links in the description if you'd like to check out those videos. So for demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using my procedural rock cave wall material, and I also have a growing tutorial playlist on how to create procedural materials in Blender, and you can also check out my recently released product, my ultimate procedural material pack, and my ultimate procedural material pack includes all of my procedural materials pre-set up in Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So the first reason is that you might be using the Eevee rendering engine instead of the Cycles rendering engine. So if I just switch this over to Eevee, you can see that the Eevee rendering engine doesn't support material displacements. Now if you'd like to use displacements in Eevee, then you can instead use the displacement modifier. And again, I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to check out that video on how to use the displace modifier. But the material displacements do not work in Eevee, so just make sure you are using the Cycles rendering engine. Now the second method for fixing fixing your material displacements is probably the most common problem that people run into, and that is that they don't turn on the displacements in the material settings. So if you click right here on the material properties, make sure that you have the material selected. If you open up the settings tab right here and go to surface, you can see that there is a displacement setting. And on default, when you add materials, it is set to bump only. And so when it's set to bump only, it's just going to use the bump data. So it does look like it has lots of detail, but if you look here on the side of the object, you can see that it's actually not using any displacements. So here on the material settings, you need to make sure that this is either set to displacement only or displacement and bump. Now most times you're probably going to use displacement and bump because this way it'll use bump data as well as displacement data and so it'll be very detailed. Sometimes I change this to displacement only if I don't want it to be super detailed. So you can see if I just change this to displacement only, it is displacing the mesh but it does look kind of lumpy and it doesn't look quite as detailed. So generally you're just going to want to set this to displacement and bump. And you're going to need to turn on this setting for every material that's using displacements because this is not an object setting, it is a material setting. So you're going to need to turn this on for each material which is using the displacements. So the next common problem is that you're not setting up the displacements properly. So I have this procedural Voronoi texture here, and this data is the displacement data. Now if I plug this Voronoi texture distance directly up to the displacement, you can see there's going to be a big problem here. It's kind of jutting off to the side and it looks really stretched and warped. And that is because this Voronoi texture is black and white data. So the gray dots are black and white data, and the yellow dots are color data. But if you go right up here to the material output, you can see this is a purple dot, and so that is displacement data. So just like you would do with a bump node, if you want to add normal data, you need a node to convert the color data or black and white data into displacement data. So I'm first just going to take the displacement node here, and I'm going to plug that up into the displacement of the material output, and then I can take the distance value value here, the Voronoi texture, and I can plug that up to the height value. And now you can see it's working correctly. And then you can also change the scale to make it stronger, and you can also change the mid-level, and the mid-level is going to be where the middle point is of the displacements. Usually you just want to leave it at 0.5, but you can change it if you need to. Alright, the next common problem is that your mesh simply isn't detailed enough. So any geometry that you're using needs to be very detailed and subdivided, because the displacements are actually going to use the geometry of the mesh and it's going to bring some vertices up and some vertices down to actually create the displacements. And so this icosphere here is very detailed and so it has lots of geometry to work with. And then also right over here on the side panel if I go to the modifier properties as well as this icosphere being very subdivided I've also added the subdivision surface modifier. And so this will give the object even more geometry. So if I just click on this cube here I can then click on the drop down here and I'm just going to select my procedural rock cave wall. So you can see this is the same material, but this cube doesn't really look like it's having any displacements. If you look here on the sides, you can see it's very smooth. And that is because if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, this cube is very low poly because there's like only one vertex here and then there's only like another vertex there. So you need to make sure your object has lots of geometry for the displacements to work. So one way that you can do this is you can go into edit mode and you can press the A key to select the entire mesh. And then using the object context menu, 
menu, you can click on subdivide. And then after you click on subdivide, right behind me, if you click on this little arrow here to open up the subdivide settings, you can turn up the number of cuts. So you can see on the edge of the cube here, as I turn up the number of cuts, adding more and more geometry is going to make it more detailed. So now if I go back to object mode and look here on the side of the cube, you can see it actually has lots more geometry to displace the mesh. Now if you don't want to subdivide the mesh, another way to do this is just by adding the subserve modifier. So with the cube selected, I can click on add modifier and under generate here, I can add the subdivision surface modifier. Now the subdivision surface modifier is also going to round and smooth out the edges. So what you can do to fix this is to just change the Catmull Clark to simple instead. And so this way it is going to subdivide the mesh, but it's going to keep the object shape. So I can now just turn up the viewport and render levels. And so if I turn this all the way up really high to like six, you can see now the object has lots more geometry and so the displacements look much nicer. Now this next reason might be very obvious to most people, but you need to make sure you are in the rendered mode in the viewport. So the 3D viewport has a few different shading options. And if you hold down the Z button, that's gonna bring up a pie menu and you can move your mouse between the different options. And if you go right up here, you can see there are also the four different options. So so you need to make sure you are in the rendered mode so you can hold down the Z button and then move your mouse up to the rendered view or you can also click on this button right up here to go into the rendered view. So you can't see the material displacements in the wireframe, solid, or material preview so just make sure you're in rendered mode. Now the last method for fixing your material displacements is if you're using an image texture. So I've downloaded this brick material from Ambient CG. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download this material. And so I've added the base color the roughness the normal and then I've also added the displacement map but if I take a look at the displacement there are a few problems so you can see right here on the edge of the bricks it looks kind of stretched and something just doesn't look right and also right here on the side of the mortar you can see there's like some overlapping geometry and so there are some black areas and so why this is happening is because this displacement map is set to the sRGB so when you add image textures in blender on default the color space is set to sRGB but for the displacement map you want to make sure the color space is set to non-color because any textures which aren't directly contributing to the base color need to be set to non-color. However, the base color is going into the base color of the shader and so you want to leave that set to sRGB on the color space. So you can see before if it's set to sRGB it doesn't really look quite right but if you instead change it to non-color you can see it fixes those problems. So the mortar looks much more smooth and also the edge of the bricks looks much more correct. So those are the most common reasons why your displacements may may not be working in Blender. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.